welcome to the Chaser Decides, coming to you live from the National Tally Room as we usher in a bold new political era after the Australian people last weekend voted overwhelmingly for change. Yes, change to a one-party system. I guess a lot of people felt Howard didn't have enough power, but uh, look, not even I'd tip the extent mm. of his increase in mm. both the lower and upper house now possibly giving Howard control of the parliament. It is a remarkable result. I just hope all this new power doesn't go to John's head. You know, although, judging by some of the new monuments erected in Canberra this week, it may already be too late. Mm. So just how historic is Saturday's result? And how will it affect the parliament moving into the new term? Julian. Well, look, it's unprecedented, really. Mm. Uh, if we have a look at the lower house, you'll see that this is how it looked before. But if we factor in Saturday's swing, well, you can see just how dominant how it's become. And, of course, the, the, the real shock in the Senate, too. That's right. If we have a look at the new makeup of the chamber, that's Andrew Bartlett, as you can see, a uh, oh, broken geez. man, just drowning his yes. sorrows yes. after the Democrats wipe out. But if we factor in those Liberal gains, well, you can see what an effect that's going to have on the chamber. Oh, nevertheless, though, I think we can believe John when he says he won't do anything too radical and he won't abuse this majority. Chris, a uh, uh, fair result? want though I mean uh, we're living in fear and lockdown at the moment even at John's own victory party the security was pretty extreme the security has been very very tight there have been five bomb sweeps today indeed the sniffer dogs have been going through the crowd and working behind the scenes as of only a few minutes ago there was a full security screening for all of us when we came in and no doubt that's delaying some of the guests uh, for their arrival here Still, tight as it might have been, it didn't stop our undercover reporter Dom Knight from getting up on stage to prepare the party faithful for John Howard's imminent arrival. Let's go, Dom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Just a quick uh, warm-up before the PM arrives. Uh, we, when he comes in the door, we want to give him a quick... Uh, George Bush style campaign welcome. So I just want to rehearse a bit of a cheer, okay? Ready for this? One more year! That's right, one more year. Can you do it? One more year! One more year! After a year, Pete Costello's taking over. And can we have also three cheers for the next Prime Minister of Australia, Pete Costello? Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! And now a Mexican wave, a Mexican wave, um, for the interest rates that are going to go up under Labor. Yeah, Mexican way of what? Well, you're not going up. I guess the interest rates won't go up either. Look, so he should have been stopped. I mean, it wasn't a time for pranks. It was a night for pretending to look humble in the face of a massive victory. Oh, yes. Oh, I've never seen Howard bask so humbly. He certainly got a rousing reception, but it was a very different story at the Labor Party function for Mark Latham. Yeah, well, a very supportive crowd for Latham on the whole. But I have to say, who on earth booked the King's School Choir for that event? I do not know. I know, from the very school on Latham's education hit list. Just madness. And the choir certainly didn't hold back when news of Labor's defeat filtered through. Got your song books ready? All right. We'll tell Mr. Latham something. Are we ready? Yes. Let's sing it to the Labour faithful. <laughs> so... One, two, three, four. Sucked in Latham, you're a loser. Tried to get us, but we screwed ya. Unlike you, we have a future. Our funding will go to the right to take our rightful range. We're going to buy six new war. tennis courts, Mr. Now, Latham. You've given us another seven new war. rifle ranges by losing. We ha! We're going to build a shopping centre, a small ski resort. Door. We're going to buy a small Stop piece of the Pacific Ocean so our students can swim in it. You take that labour, faithful. Yeah. Don't you try and have one over us. You've lost. You've lost. Our funding will go on. Thank you very much, lads. Oh, I think we've told school. them. Come on. Now, get back to the rifle ranges that we've just acquired. Get stuck! 
And uh, if you'd like to catch the King's Choir in concert, they're about to embark on an extensive tour of their own grounds. Uh, check the dates on your screen there for all the tour details. But uh, back to the election results, which caught more than one of our top pollsters completely by surprise. Yeah, oh, well, you expect Morgan to get it wrong. There's no surprise there. Slightly less predictable, though, was Morgan's tip that Labor would also win the Afghanistan election. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, look, the polls have been erratic all campaign. In fact, if we have a look at the latest poll out today, you'll see that after Saturday's result, over 80% of people now say they'd like to change mm. their vote. Well, look, uh, democracy can be fickle. I mean, is it a perfect system? I don't know. But uh, I think it is still worth asking the question, in a country that has compulsory voting, just how qualified are most people to make an informed decision? Perhaps what we need are some tougher measures to encourage responsible voting. Good afternoon, madam. How are you? You've been selected for a random vote test today. We're cracking oh, yeah. down on irresponsible voting. Yep. When people don't vote responsibly, accidents can happen. That's I'm what happened sure with Bob can. Catter up in Queensland. <laughs> I just need you to uh, submit to a test, if that's all right. Would you mind saying something political into this testing unit? Vote, vote Liberal. Right, OK. All right, so you do appear to be under the influence of the Liberal Party. Is that correct? Is that what you mean? Oh. Yeah, have you read any political commentators in the last six hours? No, I haven't. Uh, what's his name on the ABC? <laughs> Kerry, uh... Oh, Kerry O'Brien. Oh, there's yeah. a very strong chance you're under the influence of the Labor Party then, unfortunately. <laughs> Are you considering uh, voting under the line in the Senate today? I actually, I was. If you're going to be voting below, below the line, I do need you to count to 78, please. Let's go. No, no, I'm not going to count to 78. I, it'll take, it'll I, can't let you go, I can't let you go into that booth until I know that you're capable of go, going all the way to 78. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. Sorry. I'm, I think, I think you've had a problem there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What was up to 36? 37. Right, OK, come on. Starting from 37 so or from where it's I started? It's OK from 37. I, I mean, don't play with me, mate, because if I have to take you back to one, I will. 4, 65, 67. No, 66. Oh, see, now that's sort of Do thing. I have to, to start get, again? Is there any chance you'll be voting under the line today, sir, in the Senate? No, they won't. You won't? No. OK, well, in that case, I just need to check. Are you able to, to count to one? Yes. Right, can I you prove it, so. please? Yeah. One. Right, OK, that's good. Right, yeah. That's good. Enjoy your vote, but please vote responsibly. So what's this about the government winning the election? That's right, which means we can now get back to business as usual. But you said you'd strengthen Medicare. That was before the election. What about the decline in bulk billing? That will continue, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I thought you said... You didn't really believe those ads, did you? What? So it was all a load of bull... Look, stop complaining. If you don't like it, pay for your own health insurance. Screwing Medicare. It's just one of the ways we are strengthening private health funds. Authorised by the Australian Government. Ten years in the business and all I get to do are these very fast voiceovers. Back live in the National Tally Room, where there's only 27,000 hours until voting resumes. 27,002 hours in Western Australia. And, uh, Chris, where to now for Labor? I mean, such a devastating loss. Yes, it was. It was. But, uh, look, I agree with Alan Ramsey. If you disregard the actual result, mm. this was a very positive campaign Ooh, for Labor. Well, I mean, yeah. remember that uh, Latham actually won a debate a month ago, and I think over the six weeks of this campaign, voters have really warmed to his wife. Well, yeah. what this campaign yeah. showed us, really, is that Marx got what it takes to lead Labor to defeat. I was, yes. I was impressed just how well he lost. Yeah, and I think he yeah. really deserves another shot at the next I loss. So. Yeah, although Labor's internal polling does prove that uh, they've got an embarrassment of riches when it comes to potential losers to draw on. Well, Beasley's certainly a more experienced loser. Well, at least with Kim, the party doesn't get its hopes up so much. Mm. That's the advantage. But uh, what other options are there for Labor? And can we expect a losership challenge in the next term? Now, if Labor loses, do you think it's time for a woman to lose the next election? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Isn't there affirmative action in the Labor Party that 25% of unwinnable positions are meant to go to women? <laughs>